What are the key matchups here, Mike? Um, well, I mean, I think, again, the contact area is going to be massive. You know, Parai, Foley, Jenkins, their guile. Technically, they've been very astute about how they manage and what, what they compete for and what they don't against the power mm -hmm. of, uh, of Forbes and crew in that area. So it's very much the Kiwi power game against the guile of the New uh, Australians. No Bryce Heem, no Ambrose Curtis. Uh, so some big names missing from the New Zealand starting seven. Yeah, and they've gone with Ioni. I thought they went Heem up front, you know, um, to give him a bit more attacking attacking prowess and um, you know Foley and Jenkins will look at that startup and then they'll be licking their lips I think so they can compete at the breakdown of physicality. Well here we go semi-final number two the prize is a date with England in the cup final it's Australia against New Zealand. Born in New Zealand he goes in as well <clears throat> Scott Curry Mickelson Tim Mickelson out to Gillies Kaka Wide right to George Tilsley, who's got the starting role in the midfield. And that ball's gone forward, but great counter ruck from the big forwards from New Zealand. Forbes, Curry and Ioane taking part of here down and then staying on their feet and driving forward to effectively get the ball back. And there they go, numbers one, four and five for New Zealand heading over to the far side. Number nine on the near side for Australia is Ed Jenkins. This uh, charismatic young man 27 years of age ej they call him of course and uh he's uh had a wonderful season clark makes them think his jaladev the pass coming in from alex gibbon who's new to the squad this season here is foley Tom foley jaladev again Oh, good chase by Ben Land for New Zealand. Quick off the floor from Clark. Fast out through the backs now to Tom Lucas. Australia looking good, but they can't clear it. To the left from Ed Jenkins. There it is, lying vacant. Tilsley picks up. A knock on by the young man. 18 years and 18 and three-quarter years, Akira Ioane. Well, they needed to get the ball out wide. There's Akira Ioane, very young man in his career. Tilsley picks it up. It just needed to be popped up a little higher. The big six foot four forward couldn't reach down and get it. But Australia looking fantastic at this early stages. So Parahi, Foley and Jenkins scrumming against the Ioane, Forbes and Curry. Lucas watched by Kaka. It's given. Ten of us good. Oh, well done. Uh, Mickelson, they won't catch him! Well, it was a blink of an eye. He snaffled it at the back of the Australian scrum, and the way ahead was clear. Look at the work from DJ Forbes, though. Into the contact, all rights to the ball, straight over. Releases it, and once Mickelson broke the gap, there was no sweeper in behind, obviously. Races away to score his second try here in Hong Kong. His 138th in his career. And that's just what the doctor ordered for New Zealand. Hello to fans of Sevens Rugby in uh, Australasia, Australia and New Zealand. There's Tim Mickelson's telly moving up with a couple to 28. A couple of tries in the, on the third day of this wonderful tournament. Stadium is packed. Fans are in. Great players on display, one semi-final, a brilliant victory with great thinking and tactical wisdom by England over Fiji. And now let's see how Australia reacts to that break that went against them. Given. He's a tackler, player. Ripped away by Mickelson to Kaka. Sidestep for one of the rare times. Gillies Kaka, second try for New Zealand. And it came again from an effective turnover. Mickelson was the tackler, so he had all rights to the ball. This is it here, Mickelson. He's made the tackle. He's allowed to get up and play it, and that's what he did. Like a thief in the night, he pinched it. One pass yet again, and somebody scores for New Zealand. On this occasion, it's Gillies Kaka. We know he's got the wonderful side steps, but he's been almost keeping them in check. 
Will he not displaying them until the critical moments of decision? Here he is as a goal kicker now. Nice relaxed swing, but it's away. 12 to nil. Uh, to me, after the way Australia started, uh, that's a shock. Turn around and score. Yeah, they needed to try and release it. They did have a two-on-one situation, Australia. They never took it. And in this game, where you only get one or two chances, New Zealand have capitalised on both. So there's the short stabbing kick to about the 15 metre mark. The hard working Jenkins has it. There goes the New Zealand captain over the top of him. Lucas. Now we see the very powerful running from Clark. Tarahi. Jelladev away. Alex Gibbon. Clark again, ridden down by Ioane. And New Zealand have identified the breakdown as a weakness in Australia's attack. Challenging every single ruck, and on that occasion it's George Tilsley who kept his, hand, kept his feet, rather, supported his body weight. And there you go, ball's given away. A minute to go, just a bit over in the first half of this semi-final. Sky by Curry. Tilsey now. Got a bit jammed up in midfield. It's a 50 50 ball, and uh, Mickelson kicks it away. But lost forward before that. Thanks, Liz. So Tilsey and Ioana getting the start in this semi final for New Zealand. No Bryce Heen today, which uh, was. Originally thought would be a great loss, but here's New Zealand with a good lead in the semi. Not to say that it's over yet. Oh, Halfway line good. number five is Peter Schuster. New Zealand in possession. Come and in, goal. Lost forward. Lost forward. Schuster away. Nice work out by here by Parahi. There's a good swinging movement from Australia. That'll be a penalty. Won't be half time. Taken quickly by Jenkins. Referee wants him to come back. A little pedantic there by Rasta Rasavengi. Want to take it from the exact spot. Tap and it down. Yeah. Yes. Tap it down, and that's against Kaka. Yellow there's a, card. There's a high tackle there as well, so he was playing double advantage. So this could be. A change situation. Australia will want to score here before the break with the man in advantage. I have it with Lucas now. Parahi. The in pass again to Tom Lucas. Schuster. Chance for New Zealand though to kick it to touch now and take the break. That's New Zealand up 12 0. Sorry, Keith, that's a crucial mistake for Australia. In one man advantage and just before the break they needed to strike i wonder what sort of mind games that plays on this very young australian side it's the half time new zealand in the lead 12 nil continuity is strength Hamlin sponsors rugby union on sky sports we have uncovered intel that one man who survived the mission was 13. He is the link to an operation so dark that no one knows its actual purpose. Thanks, you. The president needs your help. He's promised to do all he can to uncover your real identity. We'll find the truth, or I'll die trying. So bring it on. 13, a brand new series starts Wednesday at 10, only on Sky 2.
Welcome back to finals day at the Hong Kong Sevens. It's half time in the second cup semi final between New Zealand and Australia. The All Black Sevens leading at 12 points to nil. What can Australia do to get back into this game, Mike? Well, they've got, to, they've got to hang in there, I think, really. They've got to try and get the next score, but they've got to try and control the ball. I mean, they've been done over twice with Forbes in the contact area. And uh, I think the key is they've got to get that play away quickly, like they've been doing in previous games, and actually have a go at them in the outside channels. A couple of errors there from Australia, a crucial time for the deep in the All Blacks territory and, and couldn't hold on to the ball. That, has that really cost them here? Oh, definitely. When you give the Kiwis you know, half a chance, they'll take it. And you know, to, to come out with those errors in this, such a, a tight game in the semi-final, they're going to punish you. And it, it is that you've got to control the ball and don't give them any little sniff of, a, of, a, of an opportunity. Seeing a replay there of a deliberate knockdown from Gillies Kaka. Uh, not given by the referee, I, I guess there's a chance that that could have been a penalty. But hey-ho, we move on. It'd be a good story if Australia could come back here. The last time they won it, in 1988, their coach, Michael O'Connor, was playing for Australia. So it wouldn't be marvellous if they could find their way to the final. But they've got a 12-point deficit to make up here. Let's get back to Hong Kong. The yellow card symbol for them up top left here was screen. Here is the hard-working Schuster. And now it's Jenkins. Can he get a pass away? Can he create space with the one-man advantage? Good. good work again by DJ Forbes of New Zealand. And Australia have lost it forward. Just getting isolated, the Australian player, Cam Clark, on that occasion. And New Zealand sending in more players than the Australians are. And effectively getting the turnovers. That is costly. That's a killer for coaches. Australia have had much more success at passing they had those early those early moments oh wait time off time off time off so substitute for australia coming in to the team now is upper pakalani oh we didn't call it Stigia came on and did it himself it's complete now and uh, that's uh Jelded coming off time back on so that's a big blow for Australia with their very speedy out, out of back Greg Zeladev coming off. At the tunnel, at the tunnel, at the tunnel. Let's go. Let's go. Mickelson. Lost forward, just a little bit of untidy play from both teams here. Ref playing the advantage, and now goes back to tidy it up. Simple error there by Tilsley going into contact, and now New Zealand have returned to seven players. So sitting down on the New Zealand bench, uh, this is uh, good. Uh, Brett Gosper, the uh, head of the International Rugby Board, and to the right, Lord Sebastian Coe. One of the people that brought the rugby sevens into the Olympic Games, but this is this is all it's all not going well here for Australia because it's not going anywhere, isn't it? It's a pile up. But uh, let's see what Pakalani can do. Para he has caught the two number twos. Forbes over the top. That's the 22 meter line. Nice side step. Away. This is better from Australia. They've got it out to Lucas. Big cheer goes up now. The goal line looms. Well, that's one of the first ones to Australia going in their favour. Tim Mickelson not releasing, says the referee from South Africa. And Australia just can't breach the line. No missed tackles in the game so far. Australia. Now the clock continues to tick. They need to score. They have to score twice to get the lead. Here they go this time. That's Pakalani. Very loose. And he's going to go in. And go in behind the posts. The power of the unpredictable. After Pakalani. Well, the man, they, the impact from the bench, rather. 
And look at this, he had a bit of work to do as well. Tilsley flew out of the line, and that's what created the space. Curry couldn't get across in time. And it's smart play to bring it around to improve the position for Cam Clark to convert. And he won't miss. These deadly is Clark, and that now gives Australia real hope and plenty of time at three minutes and a quarter to go. And it happened off the back of their first time where they held on to possession and got a penalty from the breakdown. So Cameron Clark kicks off. It goes to Forbes. Parahi gets Forbes. Drives him across the touchline. It'll be an Aussie throw in. Just like this, hold it there. Signs of battle of from both teams, aren't they? You see the Open tape up. and the cuts. Open up black. Back this is tense semi-finals rugby. You've got to attack in semi-finals to get through. This is an overthrow by Australia. Oh, it put us on their way from the bounce, but lost forward. By Con Foley, normally so reliable. biting stuff for Mick O'Connor he won here as a member of an Australian sevens team 32 years ago and he's now signaled that he is giving up the coaching of the Australian sevens team and someone will soon come in to take his place that hasn't been decided yet they're working on that but he'll be a hard man to replace Sherwin Stowers is into the game Mickelson bursts up the centre track. Lamb, this is better from New Zealand. Lamb to halfway. He's got Forbes with it. Over the top goes Stowers. Now it's with Lamb again. Lamb to the gap. Rolls it inside to Curry. And Curry. Off the Sinbin chair. Goes in under the posts. And is that the one that might convert into a victory for New Zealand. Well, it's a cruel game as sevens because Australia have dominated territory possession, and this is the last pass there. Look at the angle that Kaka ran and Curry. The communication between the All Black Sevens team is Eight, outstanding. Nine. They absorbed all the pressure on their own line, and they've struck back. And so that's Kaka adding another conversion, two tries for him. So 14 of the 19 points scored by this young man and New Zealand now leading by 19 points to seven to seconds to go. Australia continue not having beaten New Zealand this season. This is the fourth time they've played. It's always a tight tussle. But this time, it's favoured New Zealand, Clark. They'll try to build it up from the backfield. In desperation coming into the game is Paul Asquith and now Nick Maloof. They've emptied the bench to get fresh legs into the game. Asquith goes down. Just five, you see, seven, six seconds to go. But the Aussies are still trying in the Aussie tradition. Pakalani put down by Stowers. Schuster. Dixon pushed away, Australia into the backs, Jenkins, space for them, Asquith, Clark goes down, gives it to Forbes, New Zealand will try to hurry it to the sideline, and Dixon does just that, and it's over, Sam Dixon comes off the bench, and kicks the ball away to the sideline and New Zealand will progress through to play the final against England on the back of a 19-7 semi-final win over Australia. Fortunate to be joined down pitch side by Lord Sebastian Coe. Um, first of all, what do you make of those uh, the two semi-finals? Well, fantastic games and great to see, obviously, with a little bit of local interest, 
England qualifying for the final. I think it's the first time, I think in about seven years, they've actually made a final here. So that's fantastic. And of course, the full excitement of this year and next year, given the Olympic qualification that is really now with us. This next game is a big one, isn't it? For Japan and Italy, they have the chance to qualify to get onto that series. Yeah, exactly, and the games is now, you know, when we were talking about this a couple of years ago and rugby made it across the line in 2-9, it was, it was a bit away, but now this is imminent. It's, it's literally a year and a bit. From looking around here, what is rugby going to bring to Rio? Well, it's going to bring young people, it's going to bring excitement, it's going to bring, it's going to bring a new group of people, and I think it will also help the national sides globalize. You know, it's athletic, it's, it's, it's got really a youthful appeal to it. You've got to be careful sitting on New Zealand's bench, by the way. Gordon Titchens might have given you the nod. <laughs> I did actually did a, a, a seminar with him. He's a really fascinating guy that uh, sees the world classically through the eyes of an engineer. My father was an engineer and my coach, so it was a bit like listening to a kindred spirit. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Yeah, great to hear from Lord Sebastian Coe in Hong Kong. The action comes thick and fast. England